During the month of October, we are working to raise breast cancer awareness and support women on their recovery journey. For many, that means reconstructive surgery. Here to share her story is Wendy Razek and the team she sought to help her. Dr. Samit Teosha and Dr. Nicholas Haddock of UT Southwestern's Harold C. Simmons Comprehensive Cancer Center. Thank you for joining us. Wendy, let's begin with you. Can you tell us a little bit about your cancer journey and how you made your decisions about reconstruction? My cancer journey started July 2019 uh, during a routine self-breast examination. Uh, I felt a mass in my left breast. Immediately, I was alarmed and thought, what am I going to do? Uh, a few days later, I was diagnosed with uh, hormone receptor positive breast cancer. Did my research, found UT Southwestern. They uh, set up all my appointments for me. I met with Dr. Teosha. Uh, he was amazing. I got a phone call from uh, Dr. Teosha's staff telling me that uh, he and Dr. Haddock were going to do the surgery together uh, to minimize the surgical time. I was in the hospital for a couple of days, up walking around. That's where we are now, um, and I'm feeling wonderful. That's great. Dr. Tiosia, when you hear a story like Wendy's, uh, tell us a little bit about how you're thinking about options for women as they're making decisions about the type of breast reconstruction to have. I emphasize to all patients, regardless of age, that it's a very personal journey. It's a very patient-directed interview. It's more like a shared decision-making process. So I uh, throw out some thoughts about what's available. It goes all the way from implants, uh, combinations of tissues, and other pioneering things that we're doing here. So the patients have a full gamut of options. And then it's a long process where we actually discuss uh, uh, what's best for them and if they want to uh, start the process. Dr. Haddock, Wendy mentioned that you and Dr. Tiyosha worked as a team during her surgery. Tell us what that means and and sort of how that translates into options for patients. We started working together, I don't know, maybe about eight years ago, where we became kind of this microsurgical breast reconstruction team. And so in the operating room, it's, it's drastically changed uh, the efficiency. And so certainly there's a big difference between a nine-hour operation and an and a under four-hour operation. And when you've got two people that are you know, experts in a field and working together, uh, it's almost like a dance. We just constantly keep things flowing. And, and ultimately, the, the outcome is a better recovery, quicker recovery. Uh, and just better experience for our patients. Dr. Tiosa, you and Dr. Haddock are experts in these types of operations where you take tissue from another area of the body and use that to build a breast. Tell us a little bit about that operation and why it might be a good option for certain patients. The tissues from parts of the body uh, can come from various uh, places. So obviously one of the most common ones are the low abdomen. Uh, and that's called a deep flap. It's uh, named after the artery inside the abdomen called the deep infepigastric artery perforator flap. It's a fancy word, but it essentially means that you take a skin and fat and it's connected to a blood vessel. And these are very tiny blood vessels and one has to use microsurgery to transplant that. So it's a transplant from one part of the body to another. But here we're fortunate enough to offer many other options besides just the deep flap and uh, we have pioneered many combinations of flaps. So one can take tissue from the buttock or the low thigh, and even as recently as the low back. And uh, this is one of the centers in the world that can offer such a wide variety of combinations. It's their own tissue, it's warm, it's soft, it will naturally shape into what we think is going to be a pretty breast and something that's permanent. Dr. Haddock, what are some of the new innovations in breast reconstructive surgery? all of these operations where we're moving tissue, we're trying to limit the harm to wherever we're taking the tissue from, what we call the donor site. And really much of what we are focused on is, is doing that. Wendy, what was your recovery like? It was just easy for me um, because I was up walking around. I could have done more, uh, but Dr. Teosha said, do not do more, do less. So that's what I did. Dr. Teosha, there are many treatments for breast cancer. How do you think about the timing of reconstructive surgery as it relates to completing chemotherapy and radiation therapy? Well, I emphasize to patients that, you know, cancer always comes first and we're sort of adjunct as reconstructive surgeons and then we will sort of end and finish with that process. So the cancer always takes a paramount uh, role into uh, a patient's health. We're constantly uh, working to balance 
the cancer journey to the reconstructive journey. And it's a complex process and it's an individualized process. Dr. Haddock, tell us how the reconstructive surgery team works with the cancer team. It's really one big team. So it starts with cancer treatment uh, surgically, and then we walk in immediately afterwards and start the reconstruction process. And so that's just the surgical aspect. But, you know, if someone needs chemo or radiation, then it's all integrated together. And, and one of the beauties of a, a center like this is that is we are all one big team. I've got all of these doctors on my cell phone, and I can call them and talk about things. And we do that regularly. Dr. Teosha, you mentioned that you and Dr. Haddock often do surgery together. I'm curious, how did you start working together? It was a very serendipitous uh, sort of a event. And Dr. Haddock and I both come from creative backgrounds. And I think it forces us to rethink things uh, in a different way. You know, we're both type A personalities. I mean, I think that having two very focused plastic surgeons to be together in the operating room, it's not a common thing. And we discuss the critical parts of the operation at every minute. This is sort of emphasized by surgeries that we used to do eight hours or a few years ago, and now we can do about half as time. And it's not because our hands have gotten any faster. Matter of fact, we're older. So I think it's the decisions rather than the incisions that make us a truly integrated team. And I think it's a rare thing. Dr. Teosha, what would you say to a patient who's facing a breast cancer diagnosis and potential surgery and reconstruction during the pandemic? Patients do ask and how it is in the hospital and environment. I said, well, it's very safe in a sense standpoint that probably safer than a grocery store or going to a small family gathering where you may not know the other person or your neighbor. But here we uh, check ourselves. It's the safest place uh, in a hospital is actually being in surgery, in a matter of fact. Dr. Haddock, what are the three things a woman should know about making decisions about breast reconstruction surgery? All patients have to understand that it is a journey through the process of breast cancer care and then breast reconstruction. And that timeline varies greatly depending on what's needed, but, but that's critical. The other thing is, know there are options. Um, and certainly at a center like UT Southwestern, we're offering pretty much anything you can think of, and, and that's important. And then the third is trust your team. Pick your team and trust them and ask as many questions as you can so that you are part of this kind of shared decision making throughout the process. So, Wendy, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. What do you want all women to be thinking about this month? To get your mammogram and do self breast examinations, uh, you know, don't live in fear of what you might find. Typically nothing, but just make it a part of a preventative routine in your life. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Until next week, stay safe and stay healthy.